In this video, you're gonna learn how to build dashboards with the help of Google Data Studio. We're gonna discover how to import data, visualize it, and share it with our stakeholders. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there, and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and on this channel, we do tutorials, how-to videos, and take a look at the latest marketing tech, just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now, looking at data in Google Analytics can become overwhelming really fast. You have so many reports. So I usually recommend using it only as an ad hoc research tool and not to actually present your data and findings to your clients or stakeholders. The route we usually go is to pull data from Google Analytics into other tools such as a Google Sheets to analyze and then visualize and show to our clients. We made another video about this that you can check out in the description below. But if you are searching for an easier point and click dashboard solution, you might want to check out the new Google Data Studio. With the introduction of the Google 360 suite, we also got access to this tool for free to build our reports and dashboards. So it's time to take a look at this new piece of marketing tech. We got lots to cover, so let's dive in. Today our journey starts at datastudio.google.com where you will get access to the beta version of this new product of Google. Now with this free version of the Google Data Studio software, you will only be able to build five reports, but it will give you a great overview about the tools that you can use with Data Studio. Now before you get started with building a dashboard, I would actually encourage you to Think about the audience that you're trying to reach, the purpose of the dashboard, what data should be on there, and maybe even sketch it out beforehand so you know what you're looking for in the tool and what data you need in the dashboard to build it with the help of Google Data Studio. Now in our case, I wanna show you the functionality. So we're gonna build a general digital analytics dashboard and we'll use the data of the Google Analytics demo account that you can also get access to. I will link up the instructions in the description below. So you might be familiar with the dashboard functionality within Google Analytics. This is pretty limited and we now have the ability to pull the data from Google Analytics directly into Data Studio and build our dashboard there. So let's do that. First of all, you can choose from a variety of templates. Some are good, some are not so good, but what we want to do here is start with a blank report. And the first thing we need to do is actually pull the data in that we would require to build this dashboard. So Google gives you actually some sample data that is available if you want to try it out. You can also use your data connectors and build a new data source. Now these connectors are basically the ability to directly connect to the data source. There are a lot of Google products here but we also have some more open capabilities such as the ability to connect to MySQL database or to Google Sheets where you could really import any kind of data and do any kind of calculations that you might want. For now, we'll go with Google Analytics. We need to authorize our account, which means our account needs to have access to the Google Analytics account in order for us to pull the data into Data Studio. If that's the case, you can choose here your account and your view from where you wanna pull the data, connect this all, and you will get an overview over the dimensions and metrics that can be pulled. Now this is pretty standard. Google Analytics obviously integrates very well with Google Data Studio, but if you would link up a MySQL database or a Google spreadsheet, you might need to define the fields, the type, and give it a description so you'll be able to identify your fields and your data that you're working with in the interface later on. As I said, this is pretty standard for Google Analytics, so let's add this to the report. And we are good to go to start building our report. Now this is the blank canvas that we will be working with. By default, it is in portrait mode. Let's change that over by going to the theme settings here. And as a layout, I wanna choose landscape. This is normally what I used to work with. And now we can start building our visualizations. We have different tools available up here, better described also here on the insert. And we can simply choose one. That's for example, the scorecard here and draw it on our canvas, just like this. 
This will connect to Google Analytics, pull the data out. This is happening live. So you have the most recent data in here and it also filled already a metric that you might want to use. If you don't want to use it, you can simply go to the metric and change it around. So for example, use the users here. You can also heavily customize this. If you, for example, want to compare it and give it a bit more context, you could add a comparison here to the previous year, which will add this little date range comparison to your graphic. It's also easy to then go ahead and copy, paste this into your document again, align it, and then change it over to the next metric that you might want to display. Now let's go ahead and use another visualization type. Let's go to insert here and use the time series and draw something on our canvas again. Some data is fetched. Now we want to change this data around. I want to actually know the users here again. So I'll change the metric. And I actually want to give this a little bit more context again and compare this. So I add another metric, which are our transactions. Now this is a bit hard to read, so let's style this a bit more. You can customize your visualizations to a certain degree. Not everything is possible, but certainly the basics are there. You can change, for example, this line chart here to a bar chart and also put another axis in so it all gets a bit clearer. The same is possible with our other bar charts here that we can utilize. Let's make a country comparison here. So instead of looking at the source, we will look at the country. And again, look at users. Maybe it in another metric, which would be new versus old. So that is now added to this chart. Again, we can customize this to get to the style that we want. and even change stuff around inside of the visualization itself until we get our data to be like we wanted it to be. Then we can go to another visualization type. A table is often used in data as well. So let's try this out. Let's draw a data table, which is a little bit small here. So we can always change the element by dragging and dropping it and also customizing the data again that is seen here. So we have here sessions. Let's say we want to have the conversion rate next to this as well. So let's look for conversion rate. And it will be built. You can also change the order here if you want to by again dragging and dropping your metrics. Which will make this a little bit more clearer. Great. And if we want to highlight some details here, we can also go into style and edit this column. We can for example, put in a heat map for our column number one. That will show us the data here. Now it's not as readable anymore. Let's change that around. And in the end, we have a nice little table that lets us know all the data that we would need to know. Again, it's easy to just copy paste that if you want to have another data row exactly same formatted. Let's put this over here and change this around. Next, what I want to do is actually pull a, another metric here for our scorecards out of a different data source. So let's copy that over the next to it and let's go back here to our data. And we don't want to use Google Analytics anymore. Let's try something else. Let's go over here and create a new data source. I've already prepared a Google Sheet. Now this Google Sheet could be any data point that you want to import. I have here the number of calls and the date range. So let's import that. Connect it all up. And we get our familiar screen here. 
Google Data Studio did a great job of finding out that this is a date type and a number here, and we can add it all to our report. This will be connected. Obviously, we need to change here our metric. Now the date range doesn't go as far back to see what the change was here. So importing data from a different data source is possible, but you would need to use another visualization. You are not able to actually mix data with different data sources. Another feature that I want to show you are calculated metrics. So you might know this feature from Google Analytics itself, but what we can also do is calculate metrics directly within Google Data Studio. So for example, if we wanted to have the transactions per user, we would be able to calculate this because it's not in there by default. Let's go into metrics here and we create a new metric that will be transaction per user. And we simply need to put in a formula, which we can do by start typing the metrics that we want to calculate. So in our case, it would be transactions divided by users. We can simply create this field. And it's now available for us to pick from the stack. So this is a great feature again to customize our data. All in all, it's a bit hard to clean and transform your data. And that's why I would actually recommend to maybe pull it into a spreadsheet first, do your calculations there, and then push it out to Google Data Studio. Now the last thing to do is to add a little bit of styling and clean up a little bit of the visuals here. So we can use some of the styling options with a rectangle here. So you can draw actually into the canvas some design elements. Let's do this really quickly and change this a bit more to the style of measure school. Upload an image. Change a bit of the formatting. All right, looks good to me. Let's look at our end product. We can go here to the edit mode and you would see this is something I could share already to my friends and colleagues in order to inform them about the performance of this demo account. Now, one thing that is missing is actually a little bit of interactivity. So you already see that we have controls when we hover over certain data points that these are interactive and we can kind of see what's going on. But if you want to give the user control, and this also depends on our data story, if we want to do that, then we can build that in as well. So let's go back to the edit mode here and build in some controls. There are actually two controls right now that you can build in. One is the date range picker. This is the same that you can see from Google Analytics. Basically gives you a date range. We would need to change a bit the color here so it's visible. And if you go into edit mode, we can select our date range and we could say we wanted to have the last 30 days. Apply this and this will pull the data newly from Google Analytics and update all our visualizations here. So very handy when it comes to giving the user interactivity to dig through the data himself. We can also add it in filter options. So let's do this really quickly. We can use this filter control field. Now by default, this is a checkbox list, but we can also change it into a drop down menu, just like this, and give the user the choice which data he wants to look at. So for example, here I would like to let him sort this by the source, so he can filter out dynamically source. We would need to connect this back to our Google Analytics data. And the dimension here would be source or source medium. And the metric we are looking at are sessions. Let's change the styling of this. Now, if you go back to our view mode here, 
we can actually get a drop down list of all the important fields. And if we only wanted to look, for example, at Google CPC data, Google AdWords data, we can automatically up reload our report and update the numbers and then see how our store is performing or our website is performing only with looking at that data source. So very handy if you want to give interactivity to your users. So let's say this is done and we want to now present our data. What are our capabilities here? So first of all, you can at any point share the report even to collaborators to work with you on this dashboard. So you can invite them and give them added access. You are the only one who can actually delete it because you're the creator of this report, but you can invite somebody to access this report and edit it with you. You can also invite people to view that report if they have access to Google Data Studio. They would be able to play around with the data, only the interactions that we have to find on the page itself. Now what you can also do is actually get a shareable link. And this will enable you to take this link, put it into an open intranet or send it around to friends. Again, here you can view or edit the same options that you would have with a document in Google Drive. Now currently there is no possibility to actually embed your dashboard into an intranet or onto a client's page or into another dashboard that you might have prepared. Maybe that's a functionality that will arrive soon. Another capability is to actually print this out as a PDF. So if you're in view mode, you can go ahead and print this whole thing by opening up your print settings and saving it as a PDF. Unfortunately, you would need to do this with every page that is out there on your report. Now I'll make this little dashboard that I have built. It's not very pretty. There could be some more tweaks that we could make to it. But anyways, this was a demo that I wanted to give you for the capabilities of this dashboard tool. I will make this available to you in the description below. So you can actually copy it and implement it to your data source if you might choose so. Or if you want, you can also go ahead and go over to the Data Studio Gallery, which features some really cool visualizations of data that were built with Google Data Studio. All of them are also free to open, copy into your account, and then run your numbers on them. In the end, don't forget to give your report a name, share it to your colleagues or your friends, and I hope this was useful so you can get started with building your own Google Data Studio dashboard. So there you have it. This is how you can import data, visualize it and share it with your clients and stakeholders with the help of Google Data Studio. If you are already using Google Data Studio, I'd love to hear your experience in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, please share it with a friend or a colleague and subscribe to this channel because we'll bring you new videos every Wednesday. My name is Julian, till next time.